25 ways to use redstone to transform your house. Redstone is a very versatile tool for Minecraft, and while it can clearly help us to automate farms and travel, today we're covering some of the best ways that you can use redstone to improve your base. And hey, the YouTube senator tells me that while most people use their hands to subscribe, no one has ever used their wrist to subscribe to the channel. So if you're up to the challenge, jam your join on that red sub button down below. It's free, and it ups out a ton. Number one. I'm sure plenty of you already know that a super smelter is a great staple to have in your house, but most of the time, they're not exactly a looker. So if you wanna keep a bit of that mystery and not know how the sausage gets made, then you can actually build this, which is a hidden furnace array system. All that we have to see is the three chests on top. All it takes is a system of hoppers and droppers, and you can get all of the cooking done right out of sight. And then when your ores or food is done smelting, it'll be delivered to you right fresh in that chest up top. Number two. With the advent of the 1.16 update, all of a sudden, now we had a new fire color to play around with. Sure, while you could just put a flint and steel on any kind of block and get a red flame, if you happen to do it on a soul sand or soul soil, now you're getting blue fire instead. It's a pretty cool feature, and it definitely can help out depending on what color palette you got going on for your base. Or say that maybe you want to switch between the two. Well, no worries, putting together a switch system like this, we can have pistons move it at the flick of a lever to change it from regular fire right over to the soul variant. So whether you're looking to feel at home in the nether or home for the holidays, you can change your fireplace up just like this, and it's really not that much of a hassle. Number three. When you're playing Minecraft for long enough, you're sure to accumulate a lot of junk, which is par for the course, but at some point you gotta get rid of it. And while stashing it in a forgotten chest or throwing it into fire is a nice way to go about it, no folks, what you need instead is a bouncy trash can using slime blocks. The way it works is simple, you place your items on the floor, you hit this button, and boom, they will bounce right up into the sky and get burnt to a crisp. Is it satisfying? Oh, absolutely. But just make sure you don't get too close to the trash chute. Number four. I feel like potions are an often underused part of Minecraft. I mean, when you look at how some of these effects work, they can definitely pay off, but most of us don't want to go through the trouble of brewing. So if instead you want to benefit from all those different potion effects, yet still not waste your time in the potion system, maybe try this. By building one of these potion systems where you can select the different ingredients, whether through a lectern or an item frame, then it saves you a trip of having to go through all your chests to find the perfect spider eye to make your poison potion. And then, after you've got it built, all you gotta worry about is just taking those potions out of the brewing stand when they're ready. Number 5. Obviously, enchanting your gear in Minecraft is an absolute necessity. But while there are definitely benefits to the enchantment room, one of them is not gonna be the look. So to fix that, how about making an enchantment room that actually reveals itself through the floor? Before we trigger this redstone input, you can clearly see that the top texture of the bookshelves matches pretty well with the oak wooden planks. And then, when you're ready to get efficiency 5 on your pickaxe, all you gotta do is flip this, and boom! Your enchantment room is ready for you to use. And then, after you're done with all your work, all you gotta do is flip this switch again, and poof, it's gone in an instant. Number 6. Say you get back from a long mining trip, and you got a lot of stuff, but now you don't want to go through all the effort of putting it into the chests. Well, then obviously you'd benefit from using an item sorting system using chests and hoppers. Though, where's the fun in just throwing all your stuff into an input chest? No folks, if you ask me, it's way more enjoyable to just throw your junk on the floor and let it get sucked up through hopper minecarts into the actual system. Then, you can rest assured that as you're chucking things out of your inventory into the slot, that it's actually getting sorted into your chest for later use. Number 7. How do you think Minecraft Steve smells? No, honestly, I mean, has anyone ever seen this guy take a shower? Clearly he goes down into the ocean for the update aquatic, but that's not exactly cleaning him. Which means that folks, to keep it safe for everyone and our noses, what you gotta do is build a properly functioning bathtub inside of Steve and Alex's bathroom. Using the recent feature of waterlogged stairs, all it takes is a couple of dispensers pointing into these from below, and just like that, at the flick of a switch or press of a button, you've got a fully filled up bathtub ready to clean you off. Number eight. Look, I love trading with villagers, but when I'm done with my business, I don't exactly want to hang around with them. No offense, but they're not much for conversation. So if you're like me and you just want to reap the rewards without having to deal with too many squidwards in your base, then a villager pop-up system using slime blocks is definitely the way to go. As you can see here, when you're ready to trade away your glass panes, all you gotta do is flip this and the villager will pop out from the floor ready to do the business. And while this might not seem entirely humane, look, I won't tell the iron golems about it if you don't either. We'll keep it our little secret. Number 9. 
If you're looking to trick out your house with redstone and you're not even considering adding in secret storage, you're wasting your time. Folks, let's be honest. If you're gonna go through all the effort of putting pistons in your house anyway, then a couple of secret doors is definitely the way to go about it. Because really, why should your party guests be coming down into your basement anyway? That's your business. So if you wanna keep them away from touching your valuables, then all you gotta do is hide hidden levers amongst your base, and then when you flick those, it'll open up a secret door passageway, normally through a bookshelf, and you'll be able to go down and check it out. Number 10. Let's say after spending a bunch of time in your basement doing who knows what, after you pop up into the surface, you need to check the time of day. But let's be honest, a clock is boring. And not only that, it takes up resources and valuable inventory space. Not exactly a great deal. So if you're as fed up with these gold pocket watches as I am, then what you gotta build is a fully functional ceiling indicator clock. All you have to do to set it up is just put daylight sensors on some of the redstone lamps and then fully power the others so that at night it's a moon and then in the daytime it's sun. Not only does this give a helpful visual indicator for when you actually come out of your basement to see the time, but also it's definitely a nice thing to look at. Number 11. Now let's be honest, infinite water pools are a necessity, but they can end up being an eyesore. So if that's the case, let's get a bit more creative for your kitchen. To make this work, all we have to have set up is that a dispenser will pour fresh buckets of water into your sink. And then, as soon as you take one out, an observer will detect it and refill. And honestly, a waterlogged stair looks so much nicer in your bathroom or wherever you put it than some kind of big water basin. Number 12. Now, sleeping isn't very productive, but because of phantoms and insomnia, it oftentimes feels like a chore. I mean, you do have to do it, so if we want to keep looting while you're snoozing, then what you gotta add is a cat gift farm attachment to your bed. With a simple feline setup like this, every time that you sleep, you run the chance of getting free items from the cat's morning gift. Which means, no joke, even while you're sleeping, you're still running a farm. And hey, there you go, it's even a way to get phantom membranes, so that if you don't want the insomnia that comes with not sleeping, you can still actually repair your elytra. And honestly, there's a lot worse things to get in a bedside pet friend. Number 13. I'm sure you all know that smart homes are all the rage these days. So if you're looking to boost your Minecraft house's IQ points, why not try to add in a few of these automatic lights? And you might be wondering, how do these work? Well, the secret lies with this little guy underneath the floorboards, a pufferfish player detector. And because of the way this mob's hitbox works, as soon as you walk up and arrive, then it'll actually turn on the lights for your arrival. And you know what's even better? It could be tileable, meaning you could stack a whole bunch of these around the entire house so that whenever you return, the whole thing is gonna light up like a Christmas tree. Number 14. The 1.14 update added a bunch of different tables to keep track of. Which on the one hand is great, I mean there's plenty of stuff you can do with them, but on the other, finding room for your crafting table and furnace setup was hard enough. And now you're telling me you have to worry about a stone cutter and a smithing table? It, it's just too much. So to keep up their utility without ruining your floor plan, a crafting table block switcher is definitely the way to go. Fortunately, because they're not tile entities, all of these can be moved around with pistons. So when you're ready to use the next set, all you gotta do is trigger this input and the blocks will get cycled around for the next rotation. Number 15. Showing off your base to a friend can be a great bonding experience. Until you find that one greedy one. Yeah, you know the one. The player that always has a nose that they want to stick in every single chest you have lying around. So, to keep your privacy and take out the trash, so to speak, why not build a bit of a Trojan horse trap to do the trick? I mean, since they're already opening every chest anyway, it's not your fault if they just happen to find that one trapped chest that'll take them right down to their doom. Number 16. Getting yourself a set of fully enchanted armor is a huge accomplishment. Though the phrase fully enchanted is a bit misleading. After all, some enchantments are mutually exclusive, so you're not able to get them all in one set. And that means that most of us late game like to have a couple of different sets to choose from. Perhaps one for nether travel, another for combat, and then a daily walking around set, for example. So instead of keeping all that hard work in the chest, because honestly it should be on display, how about piecing together an armor stand swapper? Then when you want to wear the set, you can cycle through the stands and get the right gear for the right occasion. Number 17. Knowing when it's time for bed in Minecraft can sometimes be a toss up. And often I think we all find ourselves one night trying to hopelessly right click on the bed only to be told it's not time yet. So to fix that discrepancy, how about constructing this, a proper working grandfather clock? You see, since observers can detect when daylight sensors update, then you can have this system power a bell that lets you know when it's right time to hit the hay. Since the daylight sensor activates right when it's time for bed, then it'll go off and then you'll hear that sound and know, hey, it's time to get under the covers. So all you gotta do is wait for the chime and then take that as your sign to tuck yourself in. Which, trust me, is a lot less embarrassing than just standing there hopelessly interacting with a bed that just doesn't want anything to do with you. Number 18. 
It's inevitable, folks. When you play in a multiplayer server or you happen to be next door to a creeper, your base is gonna get griefed at some point. I know, that sucks. So to defend against that harsh reality, let's be a bit more proactive and deck out your walls. You see, cobblestone generators aren't just useful for skyblock. We can also use them to reinforce your base. By having cobblestone generators and pistons that are underneath your build, then as a block gets broken, it's only a matter of time before the piston pushes one up and it gets replaced. So whether it's a nuisance's pickaxe or a creeper's explosion, this is at least some way to keep your walls intact. Number 19. Look, we all know that redstone can make for some very fancy piston doors, but sometimes all you need is just some regular doors to do the trick. But that doesn't mean we have to go stingy on the redstone side. If you ask me, the perfect subtle fix for your wooden doors is to add a simple redstone setup like this. As you can see when we show it in action, regardless of if you stand on this pressure plate or the other one, both doors will open up in tandem. And then suddenly getting into your house is just that extra bit easier, which I think is definitely appreciated. Number 20, flying with an elytra in Minecraft is one of the most fun things that you can do in the game. But those wings don't always work well indoors, to say the least. But before you take off your elytra when you enter your base, here's a way that you still might be able to use it inside of your four walls. See, by throwing together a piston door system, laying it on its side, and then putting it in your roof, then you can have it open up and give you the perfect exit for your escape. Because trust me, if you give me the chance of launching out of my living room like a rocket or just strolling out of the back door, I'm definitely taking my wings and things and going right through the roof. Number 21. In Minecraft, getting a bunch of valuables is the definite aim of the game. So if that's the case, you gotta give your diamonds and netherite a bit something more special than just having them in a chest. So to do that, to really crank up the splendor of your vault, what you really need to do is combine the powers of slime and honey blocks to make a huge vault door for your base. As Mumbo Jumbo will surely tell you, as soon as 1.15 rolled around, we were able to do some crazy contraptions by mixing together the honey and the sticky. And now it's time to put all of those to work inside of your world. Number 22. Unless the homeowners association is keeping your hands tied, most of us are building bases with two floors in them at least. And while I'm clearly an advocate for staircases, I've talked about as much, sometimes you don't want to do all that work. So of course, if we're talking redstone, we gotta mention a simple elevator system. Now, as far as which one you build, we've got a couple of different options. Whether that's slime blocks, pistons, some combination of the two, even a mini flying machine, you could do all of these different options and they're gonna work pretty well for your base. Really, whatever you choose, rest assured that it's gonna impress your guests a lot more than some measly ladder. Number 23. So while I won't exactly say you're wrong for just using torches strewn about the place, I will ask for you to at least consider this. Say one day you're showing off your base to a new friend. You both enter into the foyer, because yeah, you've got a foyer, and then as the sun sets behind the mountains, you flick a switch and bam, pop out chandelier. Whether it's glowstone, sea lanterns, or even redstone lamps in some cases, this is fully capable of giving you a way to throw in some lighting to your base, and I'll add, give quite the show as well. Number 24. Take it from me, adding a hidden basement to your Minecraft house takes it up a definite notch. But you know what takes it that little step further? Developing a secret backdoor entrance to that said basement. Now, how you go about building the secret entrance is an open-ended question. There are a lot of different options to build here. But personally, my go-to is using this secret rabbit-based carrot detector, so that when you hold your carrot key nearby, Bugs Bunny over here will sniff it out and let you right in. It's straightforward, it's weird, and most importantly, it should keep your secret stash safe. Number 25. Now, we've talked a lot about how great it can be to reinvent and improve your Minecraft house with redstone. But what if we took it that one step further, got a bit more meta, and built the entire house out of redstone? Now frankly, this can get a bit crazy, and the redstone is complicated to say the least. But being able to have your house both built and then retracted entirely through redstone systems, that's a sight to see. And sure, as you can see from this time lapse, it does take some time for the whole process to be done. But folks, Rome wasn't built in a day, so getting an entire house done and dusted in a few minutes seems like a good deal. And with that, folks, power that red subscribe switch down below and have a good one. All right?